Hi everybody, welcome to the Big Little Yarn Co. podcast. My name is Mel. I am the owner and dyer for Big Little Yarn Co., which is a indie yarn company. Um, sorry, let me just scooch you over here. Okay. So, welcome to the podcast. If you're new, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Um, so yeah. If you're new, my name is Mel. I live in Hyogo, Japan with my husband Tim and my son Everest. And welcome to the mid-month check-in video. Um, a lot of people liked this type of format of just doing like a quick check-in. So here I am doing that again. <laughs> um, so hopefully this, I'm pretty sure this episode will be quite short. Because I don't have too much to talk about. I have a little bit, but not a ton. So let's get started. Uh, first off, what I'm wearing is this sweater here. It got, it was warm earlier last week. The Sakura trees came out. I'll put a clip here. We went Hanami viewing, which is pretty much just viewing. Hanami literally means flower viewing in Japanese. So you go and you enjoy the sakura trees and you usually you have a picnic but we ate at we ate lunch somewhere else and just walked around the park uh, it was really pretty the flowers are now wilting because we've had a little bit of a cold i wouldn't call it a cold front but like a bit of cold weather so which is why i'm wearing this sweater again it was warmer last week i couldn't wear it was kind of a bit too hot for sweaters even, so it got a little cold again. So I'm wearing this. This is the Untuva sweater by Ronia Coletto? Hucoletto? I'll put the info on the screen, but let me just show you. It has the, this really nice color work pattern. And I knit mine, it's kind of hard to see, but I knit mine with the split hem and a longer back. The sweater just calls for like a regular hem, but I like to like tuck it in a little bit in the front and then just have the back hanging like this. And uh, this sweater is knit with Hey Mama Wolf yarns, which is, I'm not sure if she's still dyeing yarn, but it is all um, German wool and naturally dyed so it's really nice and warm and cozy and knits up really nicely in color work it's a bit wrinkled because i kind of put this away because i thought winter was done and then i had kind of had to pull it out again for the cold weather but that's what i'm wearing i made this a few years ago so okay i do have one finished object it is not blocked so it's a bit wrinkly but ta-da I finished the Kinsan sweater. I wish I had time to block it. We had rain and I was also busy with work so I haven't had a chance to block it because right now would be perfect sweater weather. But um, maybe I could block it over the weekend. But yeah, I finished it. I ended up having to buy a couple extra balls of yarn just because I was worried I was going to play yarn chicken. I ended up only needing one extra ball, like a bit of the extra ball, maybe like 25% more. And then I ha now I have like an extra ball and a half of yarn left. But yeah, I finished it. So I'll go more into it during the end of the month wrap up. But Essentially, I've had to lengthen the sleeves. Um, I tried it on when I was first knitting the sleeves and I thought they were good. And so I did the whole thing. I bound off and everything. But then I tried it on again and it was just too short. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so um, I had to kind of do sweater surgery and I essentially just cut really carefully right here. Well, it was original, the sleeve was originally here. So I cut at the cuff, knit up this segment here, and then I Kitchener stitched the cuff back on again, just cause I did 
uh, tubular sewn bind off and that is really tough to uh, undo because you have to sew everything you can't just pull it out so I ended up doing a bit of sweater surgery but I you really can't tell you really it's very very difficult to tell that I even did that maybe if you like look really closely you could tell that it's a bit puckered but I'm feeling like maybe it'll come out during blocking but yeah I I'm super happy that I did that. I was kind of worried. I was like, maybe I should just say I purposefully meant for it to be short, but it was just like this really awkward length where it was not quite three quarter sleeve, but it was not quite bracelet length. And it was just a really weird, awkward length for me. So yeah, I ended up lengthening it and I'm really happy that I did that. I also knit the body a bit longer than I usually do. I feel like usually I tend to like cropped lengths, but I've been really into, I don't know if it's like me chain, not changing my style, but like my style's going through an evolution or something, but I've been leaning more towards, in addition to oversized things, having longer lengths things if that makes sense. I usually, I feel like even a few years ago or even last year maybe I would have, I preferred oversized but cropped when it came to my knits. But nowadays I've been lengthening and lengthening the body more and more. So yeah, I feel like I knit the body. Let me see if I can... I feel like I usually I would have probably stopped around here like right around here ish maybe or maybe a little bit longer maybe right here and then knit the um, ribbing so maybe like yeah the sweater would have been like maybe two inch inches shorter but I made it a little longer just cuz I really want to be able to tuck tuck this in you know like especially like wouldn't these pants look cute with the sweater? Like I have these corduroy brown pants on and it kind of matches this uh, brown color really nicely and I just want to like be able to tuck it in and be like have it big and cozy. I don't know. I think I'm in my cozy era. So I'm really happy with this. Um, really happy that I did the tubular mine off even though it kind of bit me in the butt a little bit for when it came to having to redo the sleeves but in the end, I think it looks really nice and polished. I really like the fit of it. Um, I was kind of worried also about the neck not being a folded over neckband because there is that option. But I think I really like having it a bit, having it uh, un not folded, just a regular two by two. It just kind of makes it look a little bit lighter and not too tight on the neck because you know when you fold do a fold over neckband like this it kind of cinches up to your neck a little bit and I think that's great for cold weather knits but this is kind of more of like I feel like a transition weather knit so yeah I'm hoping to at least wear this once <laughs> before I have to put it away for spring and summer because it does get really hot here in Japan but yeah hopefully I can wear this during my end of the month check-in so that you can see how it looks but yeah got one fo um okay so for whips uh i do have one other whip i forgot hold on just a sec okay so let's start with my current train knit so you've seen this many times this is my Aita Socks by Jenny Ansa, and I am almost done with the color work portion of the foot. I think I have like four more rounds left, so I'm getting there. Maybe next episode I'll finish, I'll have it one sock finished, hopefully. Um, yeah, not much to talk about. It's going, I really like how it's looking. This is knit with my own Big Little Yarn Co trusty sock 
This is the Satsumaimo Pie set, which is the Pie Day set that I had this year and last. But one thing to note is that I knit the color work portion with the size 2 needle for the leg. But I thought it would be nice to have it a little cinched in at the foot. I do have a high arch, so I am knitting this color work portion with a size, the regular size 1 needle. And yeah, I think that should be good because I do, maybe it will give me like a bit of structure. I don't know. I'm not sure if it'll be uncomfortable or if it'll help. So we'll see how it goes. It's a bit of an experimental sock, I guess. But yeah, it's going really well. I really like how it's knitting up. The color work is so cute. And yeah, this is my train knit. So it's going slow, but it's going. And I do have one more knit that you are familiar with here. And it is the summer vest design that I'm making in oh good I'm not in the middle of a row. And yeah, there's not not much to say about this either. I it's just going. I do have another whip that I've currently working on a bit more, and I'll tell you more about that in a bit, but I've been just kind of inching forward as per usual. So like every time I check in with you, I have like one more pattern repeat done, but uh, it's going and it won't, it seems like it's taking a while, but I feel like once I get to like the chest and like the v-neck shaping portion, it'll knit up quite quickly just cause it's knit bottom up. Um, and just to repeat, this is Big Little Yarn Co. Yarn, um, in the alpaca, alpaca silk fingering, which is such a great summertime yarn. If you don't know or haven't worked with it yet, alpaca and silk is just so nice and drapey. And this is in the uh, mutant colorway, which was my spooky summer one of my spooky summer colorways last year so that's going so not much to talk about there either so my third whip that i'm currently working on is a whip that i totally forgot i had that i was working on back when i was visiting the u.s end of last year beginning of this year um the i was working on this knit and I ran out of yarn when I was in the US, so I kind of put it away, put it in timeout, and I had to dye up some more because it's in my own colors as well. But I totally just forgot about it because it was just in this vague looking plastic bag that I just found at my in-laws house and it was just kind of stuck in the corner of my room. So then I was cleaning up and then I saw this and I totally forgot I had this. So I have been working on this because it's a really pretty knit and it's totally not, I won't be able to wear it by the time I finish it, but I feel like if I leave it alone for me to finish later, I won't remember how to work on it and I'll show you what I mean because it is quite a complicated knit. And it is the Billy Cardigan by Sari Nordlin. Uh, so right now, let me see. I finished the body, so I knit the yoke and the body back in the US and then I ran out of yarn because I don't know, I just like totally miscalculated how much yarn I would need for this thing. I'm holding, let me see if I could just hold this still while I talk, I'm holding, oh, I'm blown out, there it goes, um, sorry, I am holding my Big Little Yarn Co. Peruvian Wool Fingering Base Double and so it was I just kind of like miscalculated how much yarn I would need when I was in the US so I did a lot of it so right now I'm working on one of the sleeves right here and let me just get up and show you this is a labor of love look at all these cables it is so pretty and so intensive it's got these 
like honeycomb cables in the front and then like a long braid here and then these shorter cables here and then the honeycomb kind of the honeycomb and the long cable flows into the sleeve if you can see that and this is the back which is kind of like a mirror of the front and yeah I made it nice and long so that it's big and cozy um, the thing about this is that I'm as you can see there are so many strands of yarn stuck on here because one I'm holding the yarn double so there would be two strands coming out but in addition to that because I had to dye another dye lot of this I was worried that it'd be a little iffy especially because like I was gone for three months I I was I just wasn't sure if I didn't have as much confidence in myself about having very perfect perfect dye lots in between the time that I've been in the US if that makes sense so I'm holding two yarns here and two yarns here because I'm alternating skeins and so in the end I'm holding four strands at the same time and it's just a bit of a mess honestly it's so annoying <laughs> to be quite honest with you I wish I chose a base where I didn't have to hold yarn double but I've knit this far I'm not gonna give up now so yeah that's how it's been um okay I think my battery is about to die so hold on just a sec okay I'm back sorry if you moved around a little bit but I was saying holding four strands of yarn at once while knitting complicated cables is not is not relaxing um, it's also kind of hard on my hands just cabling in general I find I kind of have a tight grip on my needles when I knit cables I try to relax but it's just not a relaxing thing for me to knit even though I love the look of it so this is kind of like a hardcore I got a really concentrate type of knit which is fine which I enjoy sometimes you know to like have something that I have to think about um but yeah it's just it's going I'm trying my best to finish this next I was trying to finish the summer top but in the end I know that because of the complicated cables and you know just how I kind of found my groove in holding these four strands together that I will totally forget how I did any of that by the time when next winter comes around and I have to start it up again if I kind of I was kind of thinking about putting it off to the side to work on next winter when it gets colder but honestly yeah I won't remember what the heck I did so I could barely remember what I did even a few months ago when I stopped knitting it so uh yeah I really just want to get it done at this point honestly and I just really I love the look of it I don't want to give up on it so what you gonna do but yeah that's those are my knits do I have anything else to say not really um I do want to let you know that I am having another full collection update at the end of the month if you're interested and I will have more info on that next video but uh, that yeah that's all like my knitting content I'm going to talk about my most recent reads now let me open up my notebook because I wrote it down um let's see the last time I talked to you since I the last video I have read five books technically because I just finished a book last night um, but first I read Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov and I talked about this last episode and I talked about how I didn't really like it and I was hoping I would like it but in the end I didn't really like it. It was just 
I'd say if, if a three star is okay, it was a little less than okay, so I gave it a 2.75 stars. Um, I just didn't like... It was quite dated. It was for, it was written in the 1950s, and so it was quite dated. There were some things where, even though I knew it was just part of the times, it was just hard for me to read, like how women were portrayed, how the main character treats his wife, and just like how she's just used as a plot device rather than a real person. Like I could tell he tried to make her a real person, but like... He just didn't get it. <laughs> and so um, I just didn't like the main character. Um, he wasn't a very good detective, I thought. The relationship between human and robot was interesting and is something that I like to read about. It's just, it was just dated. And I'd have to say if you were looking for a book, a sci-fi book where you look at a relationship between a human and a robot, I would highly recommend the Psalm for the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. does a great job at that and it's very heartwarming and sweet and a short book. So instead of this, I would recommend that <laughs> if that was something that you're interested in. But um, yeah, 2.75 stars, Caves of Steel. The second book I listened to on audiobook while I was dying yarn was called Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll and this is a novel that kind of critiques the culture behind serial killers and by culture behind serial killers I mean like when true crime shows and podcasts just kind of talk about the serial killer and they don't highlight the fact that they killed these victims and that these victims are never really named or honored in a way that they should be. And so not saying that they never do that because there are obviously some shows that I've listened to that do a good job of that and highlight the fact that these victims were human and they had lives and these serial killers should not be should not be highlighted as like these amazing, you know, like criminal masterminds, but rather these broken people who did terrible things and who are terrible people. And so Bright Young Woman, they do not name the serial killer in the novel that they're critiquing, but it is clearly about Ted Bundy. And so they even like kind of critique like the different um, mockumentaries and like um, shows that have recently come out about Ted Bundy, like the one with Zac Efron. And so like it was actually a really eye-opening and really just it's just really nice to see the other side of the coin where when the judge calls Ted Bundy a bright young man that he actually murdered these bright young women, hence the title of the book. And so I highly recommend this novel if you're into true crime or even if you aren't and you are interested in seeing like the victim's point of view and like how they deserve to be honored and things like that, I highly recommend. I gave this a 4.25 stars. Um, the next novel I listened to was Interesting Facts About Space, and I did not write the author's name. It is by, it is by Emily Austin, and this is a literary fiction novel following a woman who is quirky and weird, and she... You pretty much just follow her life as she um, she kind of has these different paranoias about the people around her. She's afraid of bald men. She loves interesting facts about space. And she's kind of trying to figure out her life and you just follow, follow her. Um, I gave this 3.75, I think. Yeah, it was good, 
It wasn't amazing. For me, the ending was a little disappointing. It didn't really... If you're looking for a book that kind of wraps things in a bow quite nicely, this is not the book for you. But I still did enjoy the characters and the main character herself. She's really fun to follow. So I do recommend that. The fourth book I read was called Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. Draven? Draven? Um, this is a romanticy. Look at me reading romanticy. I didn't think I would read it, but I saw a booktuber, so like a book YouTuber talking about this novel, and she really enjoyed it, and I kind of, I feel like we have a very similar taste when it comes to um, romance novels and like fantasy novels, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, I actually really liked it. I think I don't usually love fantasy romance, mostly because like I like fantasy and I like some romance. I'm not a huge romance reader. I like some of them. Um, but when they're put together, I find that like one is better like one if the romance is really good the fantasy is not that great and if the fantasy is really good there's not much romance in it like it's not it's never a good like mix of those two genres when it comes to romanticy for me so when I read this I kind of had like low expectations because I just didn't don't really read romanticy ever so but it was really good actually the fantasy was solid I really like the plot itself like if there was no romance in it I would have still read it and on the other hand I mean the fantasy part kind of the romance wouldn't be there unless that fantasy world wasn't there so I can't say that I would read it without the fantasy but it was still a really good romance in and of itself the two characters were really nice like I just like really like when the male character and the female character are both good people it's just um a bad situation so this is a enemies to lovers romance if you're interested in that kind of thing um and it's not like they're enemies because they're both bad or like one of them's bad and one of them's good it's like they're both good people it's just they were put in a bad situation and so they are enemies because they have differing um which I'll call it goals and like what they want to do. I don't want to give too many much stuff away, so I'm just gonna leave it pretty vague. But they want different things, but they have to work together. They are forced to work together, but they're still enemies. Like it's just a complicated situation, but they're both good people, which I really enjoy because I don't like it when the male character, for example, is really mean and like not nice in the beginning and then he becomes nice I like it when he's nice since the start like I don't like it when he's mean and then she changes him or something like that so anyways it was really good solid romanticy read if you are into fantasy and kind of want to try some romance fantasy I highly recommend this um, and if you're a fantasy reader who wants a bit of fantasy I'd say this is kind of hard not harder fantasy but like um this is not like a toe dipping into fantasy it's definitely a fantasy world so just fyi but anyways it was really good 4.25 stars i think this is like the best that i've found for when it comes to romanticy for me so anyways that was that and the book that i finished just last night is called is I read, I was reading last episode, I believe. It's called Lapfona by Tessa Moshfeg. And I gave this, or I am giving this, I think it's a 4.25 stars, I'd say. Maybe a, f I'm still thinking whether it's a 4 or 4.25. I really enjoyed it. I think it's more of a 4.25. It has magical realism, which is one of my favorite genres. And it's just a weird book. <laughs> uh, weird stuff happens. It starts off kind of like historical fiction-y, like just historical fiction, medieval village type of thing, and then it starts getting weirder and weirder and weirder, and you're just like, what the heck? How did we get here? Um, 
it's definitely not a book that explains itself. You kind of just have to make your own deductions and like explanations are for what these mean and like what this all kind of stands for but it definitely doesn't hold your hand you're definitely like what the heck towards the end but in a good way I feel like like when it comes to magical realism a lot of the times things are not explained and things are just weird and you just kind of have to accept it if you're okay with that this is definitely the book for you so yeah I guess it's a 4.25 stars I'd say I enjoyed it it's not like the weirdest magical realism but I feel like if you're dipping your toes into magical realism this might be it for you mostly because it starts off kind of normal and then it kind of goes off the deep end towards the end and yeah I liked it a lot actually I feel like it had a lot of interesting things to say about religion and God and living your life for yourself or for others and all this stuff so I highly recommend it if you are into magical realism but yeah that's it that's all this stuff that I have to talk about hopefully this video isn't too long I'm not sure how long it is because I had to cut the video a little bit but um yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you are having a wonderful start to your spring and um, hopefully your allergies aren't too bad. It's out starting to get become allergy season in Japan. I'm pretty not, I don't really get allergies. My husband does so he's sneezing a lot so my heart goes out to those with pollen allergies and um yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye